This is gonna be an in-depth and very detailed video, a part three of a three-part engine rebuild series on your 1992 to 2004 Kawasaki KX250 engine. Stay tuned. In part three, we're going to talk about the correct way to install the power valves into the cylinder, top end prep, piston and ring installation, cylinder installation, as well as getting the cylinder head installed. I also did some cool things to the cylinder to make it run that much better. So let's tackle the top end next. We've got to install the entire exhaust valve system. Now, before I went ahead and did that, I actually did a ton of extra work over and above to my cylinder. So I got in contact with a gentleman named Harry Foltz. What I did was I ended up polishing um, the exhaust port here, and I also matched the sub exhaust valves to uh, their ports as well. So these sub exhaust valves here, I match them so the flow is super smooth and efficient out of the cylinder. And then I, what I also did was take a little bit more time on the intake side of things too. So Pro Circuit did port the cylinder, but I took it the extra step, made everything all uniform and match, also matched the sub exhaust ports here. What I mean by matching is I made them the same exact shape with some filing and grinding uh, on the Dremels. And then as well as I cleaned up the uh, transfer ports and just made them uh, all basically a uniform finish so thanks to Harry for walking me through those tips I'm really excited how the motor is going to perform now now polishing the exhaust ports doesn't really give a performance effect but but over time less carbon is going to get stuck in the uh, ports here just making the bike run smoother and more efficiently I probably did about 20 hours of work more on the cylinder it was a lot of work don't get me wrong I'm really happy with the results and can't wait to test the bike out uh, when we got it out in the track so the first thing we're gonna get back installed is this valve guide that goes right here for the main operating rod. So I did get a brand new O-ring for that. You wanna make sure you replace that O-ring if you did take that out, because I got the cylinder refinished by Millennium Technologies with the new nickel plating. So they vapor blasted it and re sealed the cylinder. Now, it's always helpful to have a jug of Castor 927 or your favorite two-stroke oil to lube up these parts as you're putting them into the engine. So we'll just get that valve guide pushed into its slot. So as you see here, all the valve components are free of carbon. I did get them vapor blasted. And then also I took some sandpaper to make the sub exhaust valve super smooth after I matched them to the ports. But you wanna make sure all of these carbon pieces are clean before you go to put them back together. I'll leave a link in my description below where I show you the process of cleaning exhaust valves. You also wanna remove any burrs on the tips of the sub exhaust valves so the valve guys slide on there easily and rotate really smoothly. And you can do that on both of them. And then you can also clean up the main exhaust valves as well polish them down, make them super smooth and shiny. That just makes the carbon stick less to them and flow out of the cylinder more efficiently. Okay, so we'll get the main exhaust valve assembled now. So you've got the holder piece, this pin, and then the small main exhaust valve. Um, I'm just gonna take a little bit of two-stroke oil on that pin. And you wanna mate the holder and the sub-exhaust valve together like that. And then stick the pin in the hole so that valve should rotate on that pin very smoothly. Throw a little bit of two-stroke oil on there, rub it all around. Now you don't need an excessive amount. You just wanna get these things lubed up nice. And then the main exhaust valve will just rest on the whole system like that. Again, you can put a little two-stroke oil on there. You can also throw a little two-stroke oil into the cylinder bore where that main exhaust valve goes. And then once that is lubed up, you can go ahead and insert the main exhaust valve into that main exhaust valve slot. Get the eight millimeter bolts installed here. and go ahead and torque those to 48 inch pounds. Then just go ahead and check to make sure that main exhaust valve moves freely in and out. Then we've got this little pin next. The little shoulder side is gonna be on the left side when you're looking at the cylinder. You can throw a little oil on that as well. You might have to pull the main exhaust valve out to get it in there. Then next up is the main lever. You're gonna throw a little bit of two stroke oil on the inside of the bore. Then we can go ahead and get that installed on the pin just like that. Next up is this main shaft. Put a little bit of two-stroke oil on that. Now the threaded end is gonna be towards the right if you're looking at the cylinder, and you'll put that through the hole in the right side of the cylinder, as well as through the main lever there. And then the slot where the Allen bolt goes, you just wanna make sure you line that up with the main lever and get that Allen bolt installed on that main lever. And then that Allen bolt can be torqued down to 48 inch pounds as well. And then just double check that the main exhaust valve moves freely and smoothly. Next up is the main valve rod here. Now there's two ends. There's a grooved end and a non-grooved end. You're gonna install the grooved end facing out 
in the rack here or the teeth, they're gonna be facing down. So gonna put a little bit of two-stroke oil on that as well. And then with the grooved end facing out and then the rack facing down, you'll go ahead and get that installed into the slot in the cylinder right here. And I just got an Allen wrench. You wanna make sure you push that rod all the way in until it bottoms out or seats. Now it's time to get these sub exhaust valve installed here. The sub exhaust valves are actually two different lengths. So the longer one's gonna be on the left or the right side of the cylinder or the, and the shorter one's gonna be on the right side or the left side of the cylinder when it's actually right side up. So what we're gonna do, again, just use a little bit of that two stroke oil where the gears are as well. And there's actually a shorter pin here on that sub exhaust valve on both of them. You wanna make sure that shorter pin faces forward to the front of the cylinder. When you go to install this valve here, again, push the Allen wrench in where that main lever was to make sure that's all the way in there. And again, with the short gear facing forward, you're gonna make sure that seats all the way into the bottom of the cylinder. And then same thing with the other valve here, the smaller one, and you're gonna get it installed on the right side hole there. Then you've got the operating rod here. So you're gonna install the rod with the teeth facing the gear. Now you'll notice a couple of lines here on the operating rod. Those are the timing marks. So you're gonna line up this timing line with the short gear tooth on the right side sub valve. And then you'll line up this timing line with the short gear on the left side valve. You can also mark these with white paint and you'll be able to see the line down into the cylinder on the operating rod where the short valve is. So you kind of have to lift up on the valve a little bit slide it through and you actually have to lift up on the second valve as well sometimes you got to use two hands get that thing all the way slid through so this is where it's going to get a little bit tricky so you see the short pin right there you want to look down into the cylinder onto that operating rod for the timing line and line up the short pin with that timing line now you just want to do the same thing with the one on the right side as well so there's a little better view of it i got the short gear lined with the timing line on the operating rod you can see how i'm rotating the operating rod you can see the teeth and then you'll see the full line of the timing line and then again the same thing there's no secondary gear in there yet you can see how the timing line matches up with the short gear pin next up is the idler gear now it's important to make sure the short gear on the sub valve still lines up with the line in the operating rod don't forget to put a little two stroke oil on those gears and the shaft as well and i like to put my finger on the sub exhaust valve there and then that idler gear can just slide right in there and you'll notice as i slot as i turn the cylinder towards you guys the timing line and the operating rod there still lines up with that short gear on the sub exhaust valve then you got the valve guide for that idler gear. So the half moon shape is gonna to face towards the sub exhaust valve there. And that should just be able to slide right in there. Now for the guides for the sub exhaust valves, I do have brand new O-rings that we'll be installing on there. Go ahead and oil them up and then throw them onto the valve guide themselves. And then you can get them installed onto the sub exhaust valves. Make sure they seat. Flip that cylinder back over. And then you go ahead and get the main valve rod cover installed onto the cylinder without the gasket. This is just gonna help us set the timing of the valves when they're in the full open position. Just get that tightened down snug. You don't need to crank down on it. We're just testing now. Then pull the operating rod out all the way to the open position. And when they're in the open position, you'll be able to see completely through the sub exhaust valve ports on the left there and the right. Now what we're gonna do is completely open the main exhaust valve here and make sure that is all the way pulled out so when you look inside the cylinder, you won't see the valve hanging down. So you got this valve in the closed position. I'll go ahead and open it up to completely expose the entire exhaust port and it's just full flow out of the exhaust port. So you wanna make sure you're continually holding that main exhaust valve so it doesn't fall back in because we're setting the timing. Then you'll install the main valve gear onto that main valve shaft there. Again, making sure that the main exhaust valves and sub exhaust valves are pulled to the open position and then go ahead and install that nut there they are reverse threads making sure the valves are still in the open position the entire time this is very important or else the timing of the valve won't open up and line up just get that snug for now and this nut will be torqued down to 78 inch pounds 
back out the screw to the main valve rod cover and you can take it off. Make sure everything is lined up correctly. Pull the rod to the sub exhaust valves all the way out. That main valve rod should poke out and be flush against the case there. So that's kind of your check there to make sure that everything is timed up correctly. You also just want to take a look inside the cylinder too to make sure that main exhaust valve is all the way up inside the cylinder. If this main valve rod isn't flush against the cylinder and all the valves aren't completely open, like you see there, you can see completely through the cylinder there in that sub exhaust port. You'll have to take everything apart and then redo the timing again. Next up, you got the retaining screw for the operating rod. Get that screwed in and secured tightly. You don't want to over tighten this thing. You just want to make sure it's nice and snug. Then you can get the operating rod plug installed and that thing is going to be torqued down to 16 foot pounds out with the old hardware, in with the new hardware, thanks to SpecBolt. We're now gonna get the main valve cover installed. We've got fresh gaskets, thanks to Pro-X. Now we will get the main valve cover installed first because we can't screw on this bolt if we put on the main valve rod cover first. Just get them tightened down snug. Definitely don't wanna over tighten them. Then you can go ahead with the main valve rod cover and a fresh gasket. Use your JIS screwdriver, get it tightened down snug, nothing crazy. And then the resonator cover with a new gasket. Again, snug on these, nothing too crazy. Before we go ahead and install the cylinder and piston onto the bottom end, we're gonna do a couple checks first. Uh, we're first gonna check the ring end gap and we got a Wisco piston that we're gonna be installing in the build here. So we got a couple rings and, and the way you'll do that is you'll actually flip the cylinder over, compress the ring a little bit and get that into the cylinder bore. And then you'll use the piston to even out the ring into the cylinder bore. Okay. So we're looking at that tiny gap in between the rings that sits up against the cylinder bore. For 94 and on KX250s, the ring gap is supposed to be a minimum of 0.25 to 0.45 millimeters. We'll just fan out our feeler gauges here. We'll start off with the 0.25 millimeter. You're basically just trying to see if that feeler gauge fits through the gap in the ring. We'll bump it up to 0.28 to see if that fits in there. 0.28 still fits in there. We'll go to the biggest one next, 0.45, and see if that 0.45 fits. And that 0.45 does not fit. So, and if your end gap is too tight, what you wanna do is take the ring out, and then what you'll end up doing is actually just filing one little end of the ring there. What we're gonna do next is check the piston to cylinder clearance here. Now I'm running a forged Wiseco piston and it actually says it right on the box. Um, the clearance is supposed to be 0.002 inches or 0.051 millimeters. So what we're gonna do is actually measure 20 millimeters up from the bottom of the piston, 90 degrees from the piston pin, which is right here on the bottom of the skirt. I'm just gonna put my finger there. And then we'll go ahead and measure the thickness of the piston first. And that is coming in at 66.31 millimeters. Note that down, 66.31. And then to measure the bore of the cylinder, I have these bore measurement tools. So I'll grab the 54 to 90 millimeter tool like I've got here, and then just squeeze the tool, throw that into the cylinder perpendicular to the piston pin. Then we'll measure 30 millimeters down in the cylinder. Okay, so we'll measure front to back first, 30 millimeters down, and then tighten the little knob, pull that out, and go ahead and measure the bore gauge at the distance of that spot. And we're looking at 66.36. Then you can also measure it in line with the piston pin as well. And there it is, 66.36. We'll just note that down. Basically what you'll do is just take the difference. So the 0 0.05 millimeters is exactly what we're looking for. So I sent this Weisco Forge piston with the cylinder to get replated at Millennium Technologies and it looks like they did a good job matching the piston to the cylinder. Before we throw the piston on the bike, what we're gonna do is a little piston prep here. So I've got a fine file and then some 400 grit sandpaper with some Maxima contact cleaner. And with the file first, we're gonna take the file to the edges of the piston skirt, just basically feeling for any sharp edges. And if we do, we're gonna to wanna to file them down because if there are a sharp edge, basically what that can do is scrape the oil off the cylinder. So just make sure you go around the piston and if your two-year-old son can basically cut his hands on the edge of the piston skirt here, you wanna get that filed down. So then next up with the contact cleaner 
and the 400 grit sandpaper, what you want to do is put a 60 degree cross hatching in the piston itself, just nice and light, similar to what you'd see inside the cylinder bore. And that's because with that cross hatching on the piston as well, the piston is going to hold oil and retain oil better than it would if it didn't have that cross hatching. Take a little contact cleaner, spray it on the piston. And then in a 60 degree motion, just nice and light, you just want to put that cross hatching in there. You don't have to go that hard and then switch it up and then go the other way, creating a 60 degree angle cross hatching. Okay, then what you want to do is just wash it with soap and water and you can see the beautiful cross hatching that's in the piston right now. And this is going to help tremendously for that first start and initial break in, making sure that the piston holds on to oil as well as the cylinder just to keep everything lubricated when you go to start it for the first time. Okay, next up is the piston insulation. So what we're gonna do is actually oil up the wrist pin bearing here with your favorite two-stroke oil. We'll get that installed into the Pro-X rod. Okay, then we'll go and install one of the circ clips into the piston here. Now I like to just use something that's not gonna scratch the piston so I can kind of push it against the circ clip and get that popped into its slot. And once you get that circ clip in, take the piston pin on the other side and then you can push the piston pin through and just snap that pin into its slot. Then the gap in the circ clip, you don't want that to be in the pin slot for the piston there. So just take a pick and go ahead and rotate the circ clip around to the other side. So I just like to rotate it around so the gap is completely opposite of this pin hole here. Okay, next up we'll install the rings. We'll get the bottom ring in first. So on the Weisco rings, there's no stamped mark on the ring determining whether you put that up or down. So these rings can be installed either way. But if you do have another piston, just make sure that the stamped mark is going to face up when you install it. So just open the ring with your fingers a little bit. It'll most likely end up in the top ring slot, but just gently move it down into that bottom ring slot. Then go ahead and get the top ring installed the same way. These rings are identical, so it doesn't matter which one you install, bottom or top. What you do want to make sure though is that the little pin marks in the piston the gap of the ring goes over those pins in the piston there. Time to get the piston installed. So oil up that piston pin. Feel free to put a little bit of oil too in the slots of the piston. There's an arrow on the Weisco piston that is gonna face toward the front of the engine or the exhaust side. So install that piston pin halfway into the piston. You wanna line it up with the wrist pin bearing. And then what you wanna do is just push that piston pin through the wrist pin, and then make sure it mates to the circlip on the other side. Then grab some clean paper towels, shove them into the bottom end there of that engine, because when we install that other circlip, we don't want that popping into the bottom end. Otherwise, you gotta take the whole thing apart. And then finally, you'll go ahead and get that other circlip installed. Okay, and you hear it snap in. And then again, you just wanna rotate the opening of the pin around to the opposite end of the slot in the piston. Get that base gasket back installed onto the bottom end there, making sure it fits around the pins in the bottom end. Then you're gonna lubricate the rings, the piston skirt itself, as well as the inside of the cylinder before you go ahead and put the cylinder on. All you need is a light coating. You don't need to go crazy with the two-stroke oil here. So double check, make sure the rings are lined up with the locating pins in the piston here. You wanna make sure the cylinder's facing north and south as much as possible with the engine. Squeeze the top ring, making sure that it lines up with the locating pin. And then you'll do the same thing with the second ring. Make sure you squeeze the ring so it lines up with the locating pin. And if you look through the intake here, you should still be able to see the rings lined up with the locating pins. Then afterwards, you can slowly put the cylinder all the way down onto the bottom end. All right, and then with holding the cylinder in place, this is a good time to take the Kickstarter, install it on the kick shaft. You should be able to move the piston through the entire stroke very smoothly. Got some new cylinder base nuts here from Specbolt, so go ahead and get those all screwed on. For those cylinder base nuts where you can't get a socket to torque these down, I've got this Motion Pro torque wrench adapter, and basically this allows you to get the wrench in there and the torque wrench right here to torque that to spec. So what I'll do is just kind of slowly snug them in a crisscross pattern here before I throw the torque wrench on there. So you're basically 
changing the lever arm of the torque wrench when you use the torque wrench adapter. But if you would install the torque wrench with it at a 90 degree angle, you don't have to use the calculation to adjust the torque. So what I'll do now is do a three step torquing at 15, 20, and 25 foot pounds to get the cylinder torqued down to the base. So next up, I've got the cylinder studs. I got them greased up like I did before, and I'm gonna get them all installed with the Tusk stud installer like I did with the base studs. Okay, next up we got the head gasket, the two dowel pins, the head itself, and then the new nickel plated nuts and washers thanks to Specbolt. So we bring the piston to top dead center so we make sure we don't drop them into the engine and just be really careful not to drop them into the coolant flowways. Now the head gasket here is marked with an EX, meaning that this tab is gonna face the exhaust side of the engine and it really only goes on one way. So make sure you just match it up with the cylinder studs as well as the dowel pins. And then I got the cylinder head. So we'll go ahead and get that installed next. Then finish it off by putting fresh washers and the nuts on. So with them hand tight, what we'll do is get them snug in a crisscross pattern. And the end torque is 18 foot pounds, but I'll torque them down again in a three step pattern. Six foot pounds, 12 foot pounds, and then 18 foot pounds. Next up is getting the collar installed on the operating rod and aligned with the shaft lever here. So I've got everything laid out. We've got the rubber grommet, the E-clip, the collar, wave washer, washer, and then the last E-clip. So this is gonna be a pain, but you're gonna have to kind of work that grommet over the uh, shaft lever there. I kind of just used a pick to help me get that onto the case. Make sure the groove in the grommet fits into the cylinder. Then in this slot, we're gonna install an E-clip. Then with a nine millimeter wrench, grab onto that shaft lever, and then simultaneously install the shaft lever into the groove of the collar. Next will be a wave washer followed by the actual washer and then the last e-clip. You kind of have to push against that wave washer a little bit to get that e-clip on there. I've actually found a flathead screwdriver it works pretty good to get those e-clips installed. Okay, next up is the gasket. I actually snipped a hole in the gasket to get it up over. It doesn't really hold any oil, so it'll be fine. Then align the rubber grommet onto that gasket and cylinder, and then you can go ahead and put the cover on. Get the bolts installed to the cover. It's not necessary to torque these bolts, you just want them snug down. With a new gasket, go ahead and get the hose connector installed, and just feel free to snug these bolts down. You don't actually have to torque them. Then we've got the new gasket on the reed valve, the reed valve itself. There are arrows that say install facing up. Got the air boot itself and you can go ahead and get the bolts installed. These I will torque down to the 78 inch pounds. Then the last thing we can't forget to do is torque down the flywheel nut here. So I've got the Staley engine stop tool that I'm gonna install in the top of the cylinder here. So get that screwed in until it bottoms out. And then we can get the flywheel torque down to 48 foot pounds. Okay, then finally for the ignition cover, got a new gasket on there. I put a couple bolts through it already. So it makes it easier to line up. We'll get everything screwed on and then these bolts will be torqued down to 78 inch pounds. Then flipping the engine around, don't forget about this small engine plug right here. Just get that snug down, and then go ahead and get your spark plug installed. Then what I actually forgot is this bolt right here in the resonator cover. Take that off to install the clutch cable guide. Well guys, that is going to be a wrap on this complete Kawasaki KX250 engine rebuild. I really do hope you guys found some value and were able to rebuild your engines. If you do have any questions while you're building your engines and watching this video, please leave them in the description below. I'll be more than happy to help you guys out. Any of the tools that you saw me use in today's video, I've linked them in my description below. When you click on those links and purchase those tools or parts, gear, anything, it helps support this channel for free. So thank you guys when you do that. Also a huge thank you to all the companies that helped me rebuild this engine. Millennium Technologies, ProX, Weisco, Motor Resurgence for the vapor blasting, Boyson, Eric from Precision Works for all the Cerakoting work that he did, Pro Circuit for doing the initial porting on the cylinder, as well as Harry Foltz for helping me work through additional porting on the exhaust valves as well as the sub-exhaust valves. So thank you to all those involved. And if you guys are interested in bike builds yourself, this is a part of my 1999 KX250 split fire project. At the end of it, we're gonna be testing this with David Pingree in the Whiskey Throttle channel. I'll leave those videos linked in my description below for you guys to catch up on that series. But that's gonna be a wrap on this video. As always, ride hard, be safe, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.